Good morning, welcome to 15 Minutes With. I'm Professor Robin Geimer, the Deputy Director of the Centre for Eye Research Australia. Today it's my great pleasure to be talking to Associate Professor Chi Lu. Welcome Chi. Thank you. Um, perhaps we could start with uh, just telling us what you do at CIRA. Yes, so I'm the Deputy Head of the Macular Research Unit. Uh, so obviously I'm involved in macular research, but I also was involved in the uh, bionic eye research as well. Fantastic, and you've been here quite some time. Yes, so um, well, I started off with Sarah in 1996, but then um, I was away in overseas mm -hmm. um, for several years and I returned back here in 2008. You also have expertise in uh, electrophysiology, is that right? Yes, so um, I was trained um, to do clinical as well as uh, basic um, you know, lab uh, electrophysiology. Um, I set up a few electrodiagnostic services overseas, um, at hospital overseas. Um, yes, yeah, so that's correct. And in Syria you work both in uh, clinical and um, preclinical models, is that right? Yes, so I work both the uh, clinical and preclinical pre platform. Excellent. So what question are we going to investigate today? So today I would just like to talk about, so we like to, we want to um, find a robot marker um, to, for mod monitoring uh, progressions of early stage of AMD. Um, this is something that the field sort of desperately needs uh, because um, we want then be able to use it to monitor or evaluate the efficacies of novel treatment which aim at slow down the progressions of early stage of AMD. So I guess my understanding and perhaps for the audience is that uh, easy to have a a marker of success of a treatment if you're trying to stop people who we know are going to lose vision you know, within days, mm -hmm. but your your problem is how do you know that the treatment's working if it's 10 years before they were going to lose vision, is that is that the problem? Yes, so that's right. So in the old day, uh, you know, a lot of study using colour fundus photo to look at the, um, you know, the, the disease progression, so they looked at um, you know, when people have a late stage of AMD, you know, as a geographic atrophy or a colloidal vascularization. And that you will have to wait for many, many years for that to develop. And so what happened is more of that study will involve a lot of patients or have to conduct a study for three or five years. Um, and so what we would like to do is just to find a marker that you can um, see a change in relatively short time, so that will, um, you know, help you in terms of, um, some, you know, using a smaller sample size and shorter time frame to know whether the, uh, the new treatment is working or not. So clearly something that the field is desperately needing. Yeah. So what, um, what robust marker are you trying to look at? Yeah, so we know um, in early AMD, um, problem with night vision is very common symptom in patients with early um, atrial degeneration. And we know that is associated with either impairment or loss of rods. And so what are we trying to do is to try to measure uh, a rod function. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and so there's a you know, many different ways you can measure rod function, but um, the problem we are facing is that uh, we can only measure at one spot in the retina up to now. Uh, and we know that is not um, you know, sensitive because um, uh, many of uh, IND progressions start with a very, very localized defect. So we want to be able to measure at multiple locations in the right. retina. So you might be measuring one spot, but the yeah, disease exactly. was at another spot. So exactly. what were you going to find? Exactly. And so these rods are nighttime cells, so yes. you, you're trying to mirror the clinical symptom yes. uh, with something that you can measure in a laboratory. That's correct. So I imagine it's um, quite uh, difficult to get these elderly patients to do things in the dark. Is mm -hmm. that your aim? What's the? Tell us about that uh, test that you're doing in the dark. Yes. So. Um, well, there's a, there's, a, there's a number of ways that we can look at rod function, but um, I think the most um, reliable or reproducible way is a technique called um, dark adaptation test or dark optometry. Um, so where the patient um, was exposed or the retina has been desensitized by a, a bright flash, and we want to measure how quickly the rod recovers sensitivity. So. 
so that test involved about 20 minutes, and most of people find you know find that okay to, mm -hmm. to do that in within the 20 minutes time. So that would be sort of like um, perhaps uh, when you're in bright sunlight and you come come indoors, it takes young people a few minutes That's to adjust, right. and That's as right. you get older, it takes a bit That's longer. Right. But with macular generation, it takes Take longer still. Longer. Yeah. So what you're doing is sort of giving them a very bright light and yep. then just seeing how long it takes for them to see just again in the, the dark that's right and that's called dark adaptation that's, yeah. right. that's right and so um how are you managing to do that when most people can only do it at one spot and how are you managing to do the whole macula yes so uh, we're fortunate that we um had a, a good collaboration with the engineer of metmon um, who developed many other uh, ophthalmic instruments as well and so they have developed a, a new perimeter. Uh, it's called scotopic perimeter. It's called um, um, dark adaptive chromatic uh, perimeter, perimeter. And so that has um, a um, so so it produces two different wavelengths. One is a very sensitive to rot um, photoreceptor, and the other one sort of matching equal sensitive of rotting cards. And so that will. Um, allow us to um, using perimetry technique, but then um, we do multiple perimetry to look at the change or the dynamic component of the rot function. Okay, so you've got these elderly people sitting in the dark on a it's like mm -hmm. a bowl, isn't it? Yeah. And uh, lights flashes, and they have to push a button when they can see it, and you time until they can see it. But the unique thing about this uh, machine made in Melbourne yeah. is that there's multiple um, locations that you can test at, at once. Yeah. So so yes, that's that's that. But also um, the unique about the machine, this machine is that we have a large dynamic range compared to all other um, perimeter. So what does um, that mean? So does that mean that you know um, we can it can generate a very very dim stimulus that cover the the minimum level that the rod can see. Whereas uh, the other system, the light intensity doesn't go dim enough, and so um, you're not uh, testing the whole range of the rot. Um, so function. you might miss the earliest that's change right, that's right. because so, you can't so pick it up. That's right. Okay. And so ultimately, the concept would be that you would have patients perform this test before uh, a drug or a, an intervention, and then you would hope to show that this ability to see in the dark is perhaps improved or stays the same compared to if you didn't have the treatment where you might sit, go downhill, is that the, what, and that's what's called a marker of that's how, right. how the disease yes, is so that's right, so we'll do it before the treatment and then see it after that and to see whether it's uh, stable uh, compared or, or improved compared to uh, a control group. Because of course in all these people they may have normal vision, so the typical, usual test of how a, a person is seeing is a visual acuity on an eye chart, but these people are all fine, and it's right. it'll be decades before they might lose that That's vision. Right. And so I understand that, that the quest is to have something to measure early. So do you think that you would then see a change in a year or, or two if uh, you had this measure? Yep. So um, from our pilot data of um, you know, a, a 10 patient, um, we will be able to see a change in function within a year. So that's, that's quite um, Fantastic. And thus, if you then uh, had an intervention, that's you might see that it didn't, didn't change. change or it even improved. Yeah, yeah, that's right. And thus, uh, at the end of the day, drug companies and other people developing treatments would be very keen to understand what you're developing so that they can use that marker. Yeah. Um, and what about the regulatory authorities, are they going to be keen on this sort of function as opposed to um, visual acuity, I guess, which yes. is typically what uh, funding bodies look for to see if you can improve uh, someone's acuity, but uh, this is quite subtle, isn't it? Yes. So <coughs> so I think it, it, in the long run, if we would be able to sh correlate that change in the function um, with the outcome you know, of the of the disease as an end stage, then I think we will be able to um, to uh, you know recommend that to the authority and maybe able to use it as a, a, a functional marker for um, for uh, endpoint of, of a 
of treatment. Yeah. So clearly a, a hole in, in the research that needs to be filled yeah. uh, and uh, very topical and, and urgently required. So we look forward to seeing how those results yeah. um, turn out. So thanks for joining us today, Professor Lou. Uh, and thank you for joining us as well.